something in your eye like an eyelash or a piece of lint oh my goodness this is like so painful I'm gonna have to go out for just a second so painful let's see I'm back I think I got it out of my eye whatever the piece of lint was you know my eyes irritated from rubbing it so much but you know it is what it is so all right get my notes for today since I'm the first one here I'm gonna get some coffee fixed up
thanks for joining me today. And I'm very excited for the topic. I'm so shutting. Let's start that over. Do I want a jacket on? I don't know. Oh, wake up, wake up, wake up. Does anyone else feel like they need to get their hair done? I know, I need to go back to my shop. All right, it's 1.10, we're gonna get started. Anything else? Oh, I left them in the garage. Dang it. Okay, I'll be right back again. Hey, Teresa or Alice here of the Paradox Parlor at home today instead of at work in the studio where we should be. But, you know, we're going to make the best of things. So I am going to get right into the meat of when paths collide and you're managing chaos in your life, whether internally or externally, how do you manage to stay sane and then, you know, come up with a solution to try and take yourself to move forward. So. We're going to be looking at ways that you can do that within your body and mind, and there's going to be an activity. Um, it has not been made into an official PDF yet. This is rough draft form. You get to see my process, actually. So, like, um, when I was telling you about the free PDFs from the other uh, webinars that are designed to help keep you more organized and that are free that I've made that you can get for download, they're quite nice, okay? This one right here is available right now. It's live at willpowerisbeauty.com. Once people register for the free webinars, they're gonna get instant access. So tell your friends to go ahead and join for free. No credit card required, you know that. And they're gonna get two weeks of free access and all these PDFs and the webinars. It's gonna be great. And plus two weeks of free exercises and stretches in the upcoming portal that launches on April 1st. Um, this is eventually going to be turned into a really nice PDF, like I was showing you. Um, so what we're going to do for today to help you find your ability to move forward in this new world and help yourself create an income and create a community within wherever it is that you live and you have clients or family and you're just trying to create better connections, you want to make a better experience. Um, and you want to help yourself feel better. So the best way to go about doing that is to help others feel better. And what we're going to do is figure out how to do that. So when we're trying to manage chaos and we have to identify, you know, first that there is an issue, there's a negative thing that needs to be fixed, needs to be neutralized. And then later we can worry about actually going in a positive direction. But first, we just gotta like keep it from getting worse. Right? So, um, when we're trying to figure out what the pain point is for ourselves or someone else, or like, you know, things happening to us that we have no control over, we still have to figure out at what point are we going to pick ourselves up and move forward. And when we feel completely lost and we don't have a direction and we don't know what our purpose is, that's like the scariest thing in the world, wouldn't you say? Like, think about it. When, you know, I mean, it can't be that far off. When was the last time you felt hopeless or confused? And like, I don't even know what to do. And then I talk to people usually, you know, to get help and they don't even know what to do. So, sorry, I had something in my eye earlier. It's bothering me again. Good point. 
what do you do? You know, are you going to sit there and cry about it? Are you going to fix it or move on? Or just at a certain point, do you just be like, you know what, this is life and that's how it is. And we go, we don't just sit, we go. Okay. So I'm in that mode. We go, we just, we go. The idea is you're going to fail fast. You're on purpose going to try as many things as you can in different directions, all related to things that you enjoy doing or know about or want to learn more about. But your idea is to fail fast, pick yourself up, do multiple things at once, get your irons hot in the fire, go multiple things because you're going to have a better chance of something working out. A lot of people are going to say no, that you should focus on one thing. So hold on a second. I talked to you about this. You got to go out, man. This isn't right. Running the ice cube maker. Make sure you stand up for yourself. And when people cross the boundaries that you all agreed on, that you politely bring it back to their attention and hold people accountable for their actions. Because it's important that everyone respects each other's time and that as long as you're not hurting yourself or anyone else, you know, you're going to do the best to all exist, coexist. Okay. So when we get back to this, it's bingo. You know, bingo is fun. But how do you play bingo when you can't get around other people? Well, we're going to go over that in um, the next couple episodes that we're going to be continuing to do. All you need to know for right now is that there are 25 squares in bingo, right? And then the center square is always free. So you actually only need to come up with 24 things that would be considered to be like, have you ever or would you ever okay you can have a mixed bingo board of the two things you could come up with your own ideas but ideally when we're trying to get to know our our other person better and understand how we can help them better these are two really good ways of beginning to know that person and then you can branch off and ask other things that might be more specific to a particular subject like that you know that you're interested in and they're interested in similarly and you want to get more information so that you can figure out how to customize what you can do to help them with what they need and what they want. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's a really fun way of getting to know somebody without making it feel like you're interrogating them. And then they actually want to provide the information because in turn, they will be rewarded with a nice prize from you for helping share this information. We wanna make sure that everything that we're doing is mutually beneficial and transparent and honest. That way people know, yes, I'm sharing my information with you willingly, happily, because I know that you've got a kick-ass prize on the other end designed to help me, right? So that's the same thing. What can you do that's going to make your audience feel like you're the most awesome person for them at this time because you care about the energy that you're putting out and you're trying to create something for them to help uplift their life. So that's where we're going today. All right, so... I don't have my computer as high today, so I, I feel like I'm looking really low, and if my eyes look like they're closed, I do apologize. Um, I'm going to have to get my stand from work and prop my computer up. Uh, let's see. Okay, so yeah, we went over that. So when we look at have you ever, would you ever, some good examples to get really specific and make sure that we're focusing on what it is that is gonna tap into the, the person that we're trying to reach. Asking questions that relate to them feeling um, memories of, of what they don't want to lose or something that they're really hoping and wanting and trying to gain. You want to not try and make, make people so upset that they are like mad at you for triggering that memory in their mind, but you wanna make them feel like an emotion. It could be happy, it could be negative in a slight way, but again, you just kind of want to monitor what things you're asking. Don't ask things that are too insensitive, that are going to be coming across as disrespectful or, or too deep of information that you, you don't know that person yet well enough to be asking certain questions. So another question just shouldn't be asked, and I'm pretty sure you can, you know, think about that socially like you want to make sure that your bingo game is going to be something that if it was in someone else's hands that you wouldn't be feeling um really embarrassed in a negative way that you wrote it okay because we wanted to put forth a really good image towards us personally and professionally 
That doesn't mean you can't have fun and really go out there. I own a pole fitness hair salon. So, you know, I'm all about going out there and having a good time. But it's all about framing it and making sure you're reaching your audience and that person in the right way. That's going to be like for what they need. Likewise, you know, like um, if you, like I wouldn't send something that was really outgoing, audacious, and like wildly colored to, to a bunch of maybe librarians at a, a kid's library. But maybe I would send, if I'm trying to reach that same market in a different way, I could reach the message with different wording, different coloring, different fonts. Do you know what I'm saying? And I could still be me. They could still know all about me, all encompassing the different areas that I do. But it's how I package what I'm trying to deliver to help them. And making sure that when someone deals with you, that it's the same way. That you do not have to feel like you're hiding any part of you that you have to be fake in any way with somebody um, and that you can really live genuinely. So with this whole thing of chaos coming forward, it's actually kind of going to, to cause a lot of people to either sink or swim, as I, I keep, keep saying, because some people are not, a lot of people are not going to be able to manage the, the rapid changes that are occurring. And pardon me, I'm going to step off camera like off. <coughs> I'll be honest, I've been recovering from um, a respiratory thing, oh my gosh, for like 10 to 11 days, imagine that. Um, so, crazy. I hadn't gone to the hospital um, because I don't need to go somewhere when everyone else is sick. I read symptoms, I read papers. I've been sick a lot when I was a kid, I was a very sick kid with other issues that were autoimmune issues. So I'm fairly certain that I could have had the coronavirus, honestly, I don't know. Um, but I know that my lungs were full of mucus and it was, it was really hard to get out, it's very thick, very sticky. Um, it was actually surprisingly clear sometimes kind of whitish. And um, I was concerned because I do partake with cannabis and I was concerned that, you know, they say if you um, have issues, it, it could be very bad. So whether or not it was the coronavirus that I had, I don't know, but um, I'm still coughing and getting over it and the sneezing and it, it was horrible. I have also had the norovirus, which is uh, something that goes around with cruise ships and airplanes and things like that and holiday gatherings uh, around Christmas time. In all, all honesty, the norovirus was way worse. It was much more painful, but it, it um, was over a lot faster, wherever, whatever I've got now, this respiratory thing is lingering. Um, but the nice thing from the CDC and the WHO, uh, when they're talking about what to do with people who have been infected with the coronavirus. They're even telling people who work in the medical fields that they're able to go back to work after they've shown symptoms within seven days. Then if you have a fever, they say wait an additional three days. So you're looking at 10 days. And that sounds about right because I was about out for 11 days. It's great. And um, uh, let's see, we're gonna jump one more note in my area, San Joaquin County they have extended the out of school times for the kids. They were gonna go back, I thought it was on like April 6th, and now they're going back on May 15th, and home studies are gonna begin on April 6th. So my kids are getting lessons in how to build websites and graphic art design on Adobe. And I think that is the way to go, because if you cannot go to work, you better find a way to make an income, and it's going to be online. So whether or not this is going to happen quickly that we all get back to normal life, or this is a permanent change uh, of social distancing and, and companies downsizing because they can't afford to stay in business because of these shutdowns, people better wake up. You better wake up. When are you going to start doing things differently? Because the old way is not going to work anymore. Everything is now just like, what? confetti in the sky and you better figure out how you are going to come down safely and pick up all the pretty little pieces and make it work okay um because life's a party and it ain't over yet so um right now while we're 
we're all up in the air. This is the ultimate time to study as much as you can. Your brain is a sponge. And really, when, um, when there is massive emotional connection to an issue, that is grounds for massive change. Like, I cannot even begin to tell you. If you can have a massive emotional, like, impact, like crying, anger, like something is just like you, you, your breaking point. You have to go through that fast and then you're going to actually watch yourself um, be able to achieve things that you never thought was possible because of the, the emotion fueling you and pushing you forward so it's really important that you take all that fear and anger that you have and that confusion and you channel it into learning right now and practicing and understanding that it's not just an hour a day it's going to be every chance you get put your earphones in your head put on Audible, uh, put on YouTube, put on my web webinars, go to my podcast and get whatever you can in your head that's gonna help you understand the dynamics of how to work your business, start a business, collect people online into your tribe so that one day you can have a business online. This is the new direction. And if you don't accept it and grab it and move on, when paths collide again or when this one finally settles, where are you going to be left? Whether you work in a hair salon, whether you work in an office, or you wanted to start your own brick and mortar, or you have it, like whether you're, you're in school and you're graduating soon and you don't know what, what's ahead for you, you better wake up and figure out something online. And I could tell you when this does settle that my goal is to also look at bringing back manufacturing to America. And it hit me today. It's always been in the back of my mind. Um, just, it's like a curiosity of like, wouldn't that be cool if I could do something to create jobs for people? And wouldn't that be awesome if it was, was something that they could do, a skill that they could learn? Something that even as, you know, three to five years go by, you're able to then branch off and then create your own marketable product with all the skills that you have learned. Because ultimately, um, I don't care what anyone says. If you're stuck in a low paying job, if you're in a, an entry level position, it's not a career position. You are supposed to move up. You should not be stuck at minimum wage forever and you shouldn't be in a minimum wage job forever. You all have something to give to the world, no matter your age or where you've come from. You do not have to feel um, held back by certain limitations that people keep saying. It's in your mind, it's in their mind. These limitations are in the mind. And if you can just take the time to, to free your mind, to get out of your head, to learn from other people, to learn what you can do to accept help. Too many people are prideful, won't ask for help, won't accept help, they won't take money from others, they won't do anything to help themselves because they're afraid it won't work. But what if it worked? And what if you were able to then, to then go back to those people who helped you and to show them how you could then in turn help them in, in, in payback of some kind, you know? And, and some people don't want payback. They just wanna know that what they did mattered and that they what they knew helped someone else. That the, that the light that they have is not wasted and the energy that they took to learn all those necessary skills that could be robbed from us too soon because of uh, coronavirus illness floating around. Go to these people, be mentored by them virtually through webinar coaching, call them on the phone, email them. There's so much information that can be learned and it could be lost if we don't capitalize on it and see the value in learning it and see the value in taking time to learn till 2 a.m. a couple times a week um, for as many months or years as it takes, okay? Because I've been going at this for over seven years, easily hardcore, and I'm not going to let anything get in my way of pers pursuing and, and continuing to pursue this and to help others. I believe there's enough for everybody. I believe that all sizes of businesses can survive if they are willing to, to restructure massively, instantly, constantly, and frequently. 
because that's, that's the way the world is. It is in chaos all the time. We are destined for chaos. We are born in chaos. We are made in chaos. We come from chaos. Even death and dying is chaos. So we can't expect to be living in peace all the time. We need to expect that it is up to us to, to fight the good fight, to keep our lives the way we want them, to not lay around complacent and just wait for someone else or some group of people to save us. Realistically, you need to realize that to, to, to save us, our nation and our individual families and we as an individual person, we need to think rationally. This is why I wanna bring manufacturing to the nation, to our, camp, to our area and to help other people bring back manufacturing. Small independent um, creators, makers, crafters need more small business education. You need to understand how to take your craft and, and multiply it and value what you have and sell it at a good price. Make, make yourself feel proud to promote yourself and not like a cheesy salesperson. And then once you've gotten through that, learn how to then teach others your craft and your skill and not feel like they're going to steal it from you. You don't want to be like harboring all your secrets because you're worried that they're going to take your idea and get richer than you. Like, come on now, there's enough in the world. And, and by teaching others your skill, that becomes a marketable skill right there that you can put online and help others. And just think about it. How long did it really take you to master the skills that you have? So what if someone went and like did so good with what you've learned and, and they could then feed themselves and their family? Like, good, that's what the universe wants. So please look at what it is that you can do, that you can make, that you can create, and you too can create manufacturing and bring it back to your community. And you can create an ability to bring jobs to your area and bring hope. I want to be able to, to offer training to people virtually, just like this in different areas and fine tune it and pay people to promote what I am doing at free and at cost. Like when someone signs up for a fee-based program, like the $21 booming business goals dot club coming up, you would earn 50% commission on $21. I think that's a really good deal. So I'm gonna go roll this out pretty soon. The webpage is gonna to link to willpowerisbeauty.com. I want that to be kind of like the hub. So it makes it very easy for you to forward any, any of these like um, events that we're doing, the free webinars, the free PDF downloads to your friends, your family, send them through email, go to, uh, what's it called? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn, I'm on all of those. Send them to my goals at willpowerisbeauty.com and let them know that they can join for free. They don't need a credit card. They're gonna get two weeks of free stretches and exercises starting April 1st. Uh, what else? We got these webinars that we're doing every day at 1 p.m. Uh, let's see, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And I don't know, there's a lot more to come. Contests and giveaways, oh yeah. Four or five websites are left to give out for the 21 day win your own contest. I'm gonna build you a website, simple, clean, and help you build your own community online for 21 days. You're gonna get emails and we're gonna teach you how to do it. Then at the end of 21 days, if you wanna keep it up, there's a monthly subscription to do it with me, very affordable, and we can go all over that if you send me an email to michaels at willpowerisbeauty.com. So, Send me an email, mygoals at willpowerisbeauty.com. Tell me what you learned so far from any of these webinars and ask questions, make suggestions on topics you want me to cover in upcoming moments, live or pre-recorded. With that, I'm Teresa Ordellas, owner of the Paradox Parlor in Manteca, California, and I can't wait to see you at the next live webinar.